Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Show Me My Future virtual college exploration program for all Missouri students, sponsored by the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. I'm Teresa Bont with Missouri ACAC. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping items before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see nor hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at moacac.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, moacac.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters for you to dig into Iowa. Great, thank you, Evan. Um, welcome everyone, we're so pleased to be with you tonight to talk more about our colleges and universities. My name is Sarah Fisher and I'm the Director of Admission at Grinnell College. And I'm joined here with my colleagues from Drake University and the University of Iowa. We are pleased to be presenting to you about these three great schools in Iowa. We'll share a little bit about our location, the wonderful state that we live in, and then we will each present on our colleges and universities. All three of our schools are very different, so I would definitely encourage you to stay through the duration of the presentation so you can learn about the unique offerings of each of our institutions. Um, and then at the very end, we'll leave some time for you to ask questions, uh, and we're certainly happy to answer questions specific to our institutions as well as more general questions about the college search process. So with that, Evan, if you want to go to the next slide. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Um, so Iowa is, you know, what brings us together today. As, as Sarah mentioned, we are three very different schools and in three fairly different locations within Iowa, um, but it is all about Iowa. So first off, if you aren't sure what Iowa looks like, here's a map, you can get a sense for it. Um, but we wanted to, you know, draw a little bit more attention to where exactly we are located. Um, and so there you can see Des Moines, Grinnell, and Iowa City. This is where our institutions are, are based. Uh, and I am, uh, again, Evan Favreau. I uh, represent Drake University, and we are located in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, I have to just share my background. I am not an Iowa native. I actually grew up in the Kansas City area, and attending Drake is actually what brought me to Des Moines in the first place. And I never thought I'd want to actually like stay and live there. I figured I'd go live in Chicago or like the biggest city I could find. Um, but I have really fallen in love with Des Moines. It is such a cool mid-sized city that offers, if you, you know, compare it to like a Kansas City or a St. Louis, it has a lot of the same features and opportunities just on a somewhat smaller scale, but it provides really easy access to those opportunities. And it's also just this cool up and coming city that um, I'll be honest is like way more cool and interesting than it was when I even started at Drake uh, many years ago. Um, it's, it's really come into its own, and it's a, it's a cool up-and-coming city. It's actually one of the fastest growing cities in the Midwest, um, and it's a really dynamic place to, to go to college, and um, I've, I've loved living here and, and working uh, here ever since I was a student. But Sarah, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Great. Thanks, Evan. Uh, so as you guys know, I represent Grinnell College, and we are located in Grinnell, Iowa, and we're sort of in the middle of the state, as you can see from the map here. We're an hour east of Des Moines and we're an hour west of Iowa City. So we're kind of smack in the middle between those two areas. Like Evan, I am not an Iowa native. I actually grew up in New Mexico and lived in Texas for a while. I have family in St. Louis, so I do have some family in Missouri, some Midwest connections. But moving to Grinnell, working at Grinnell College was all a new experience for me. And I love it. The town of Grinnell, I'll talk a little bit more in my presentation about this, but it's a town of 10,000 people, so it's definitely smaller than both Des Moines and Iowa City, but I think it really has all the offerings that you would need to live a fulfilling life, particularly as a college student uh, throughout your four years. We've got restaurants, a movie theater, different shops, and it really is both a vibrant campus community as well as a vibrant town. It's all walkable, so many of our students do not have cars and they can easily walk to the downtown area. Um, for whatever entertainment they want to find. I think part of the beauty of being in a small town is that sense of community and the fact that people really get to know one, one another well and they really care about one another. 
I've been so impressed just with the friendliness, the shared value system, and the way that people, the ways in which people really support and reach out to one another. Uh, and I think that's true not just for the people who live here, but also for the college students. And then we always do like to say, if you do want to have a little bit of a city feel, you can always go to Des Moines or Iowa City uh, over the weekend. Go ahead, Marissa. Sure. So if you continue down I-80 uh, and you exit on 244, you will find Iowa City, Iowa, which is home to the University of Iowa. So my name is Marissa Wietrick, and I'm a senior admissions counselor for the University of Iowa. Happy to be here and joining you tonight. Uh, we are the last stop along your tour um, as far as this roadmap goes. Um, so Iowa City is the middle size as far as the different towns and cities we're talking about tonight, but we are home to the largest school that we're going to be talking about tonight. So um, the University of Iowa has about 31,000 students, but there's about 76,000 um, additional residents in Iowa City. So a good sizable town, lots to do. Uh, we are about four hours from St. Louis and about four and a half hours from the Kansas City metro area. As you can see from this picture, our campus really does sit um, right in the heart of Iowa City. We're right across the street from our downtown district. So when uh, students ask me about Iowa City. It very much is a college town. We are a campus community um, intergrained or intermixed with our um, residents of Iowa City. The downtown district does boast over 200 small local businesses. So lots of shops, lots of restaurants, uh, entertainment venues down there. Some of my favorite um, stops along the way are Schwartz Burgers, um, Mickey's, as well as Airliner Pizza. Airliner Pizza you can buy by the slice, which is nice as a college student. Um, saves you a little bit on the wallet. Um, and fun fact about Airliner, that's actually where my grandparents met over 50 years ago. So definitely a special place in my heart. Um, I am from the state of Iowa, so I'm a little bit different than our other presenters. I have a little bit more of a tie to the state, um, but definitely happy to be here and to talk about the University of Iowa for you tonight. All right, I'm going to uh, get us started talking a little bit more about our individual schools. But before I leave this, I just want to again point out, if you haven't already thought about this, in the future, when you're planning a college road trip, it'd be pretty easy just to go down Interstate 80 and visit all three of our schools in a really quick fashion. So definitely something to keep in mind as we uh, keep talking about our institutions. But Drake, again, I'm from Drake University, so I want to spend uh, a little bit of time just telling you more about what Drake is all about and what that experience can be. Because again, as we've mentioned, uh, all three of our schools are pretty different in terms of the experience that you can find there. Uh, but let's start with the basics. You know, Drake is very much a medium-sized school. If anything, I would say we're a smaller <laughs> medium-sized school. And when it comes to our undergraduate population, we do have about 3,000 students every year uh, that are undergrads. When you combine that with our graduate programs, we do have closer to 5,000 total students. But specifically for undergrads, we're about 3,000. So with that size, we do have a lot of those small school benefits that you see a lot of small schools talk about that 10 to one student to faculty ratio, average class size of 21. You know, that is very much the academic experience that you have at Drake in the classroom. I, I do like to point out that average class size, and that's one way to look at it. I think another way is just to know that a majority of classes at Drake are 30 students or less. So most of the classes you're gonna take are gonna be in that size. And in a lot of ways, it really starts to compare pretty similar to what you might experience in high school, except you get to study what you really want to study and what you want to pick to, to major in. Um, but it does have that kind of size and that kind of feel and that access to your, your uh, professors and uh, advisors. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about undergraduate programs and some of these other bullet points in just a minute. But I also want to point out that at Drake, we are about 70% out of state students, which is a pretty um, important part of just the feel of being a Drake student. You know, at a lot of like state schools, you know, sometimes you'll, you know, a majority of the students there might be from the in-state in area. Um, at Drake, most students are coming from, you know, all over the country and really all over the world with our international student population. So when you come to Drake, it's going to be that environment where you are meeting new people, you know, building community with everybody. And everybody's in the same boat because they're all coming from all over the place. So that's, that's a, a pretty cool part of, of the experience. Then at Drake, we also talk a lot about our accomplishment rate. So if you're not familiar with that term, that's a measurement of how many of our graduates get a job or start graduate school right after they graduate from Drake. So most recently, within six months of graduation, we had a 98.1% accomplishment rate. And that's really important for us to talk about because we don't want you coming to Drake, spending that time, spending that tuition money, and then not sure what comes next. So that is really, really key part of the Drake experience. 
to talk a little bit more about academics, we do have over 100 undergraduate programs you can study. So even though we are not a huge giant institution, there is quite a variety of the different majors, minors, concentrations that you can, uh, that you can combine and, and explore. Um, so just a, a quick couple pointers on these. The College of Arts and Sciences is where you'll find a lot of different stuff. It's a really broad area of study. But that can include majors in things like fine arts, humanities, social sciences, uh, natural sciences as well fit into that. Uh, we do have a full College of Bus Business and Public Administration that has about 12 different uh, majors within that in specific areas of business you can study. We have our School of Education where if you want to be a elementary, middle, high school teacher, that's a great path for you. We actually just opened a new building for our School of Education just a couple years ago. Uh, School of Journalism and Mass Communication has majors like news and magazine media, but also the more persuasive areas like uh, advertising or uh, public relations. We also have a major called Strategic Political Communications, which is a pretty unique program for us um, that's in that program. Pharmacy and Health Sciences, we do have a, a big pharmacy program that is one of our uh, one of our biggest majors, as well as a health sciences kind of general program and stuff in athletic training and occupational therapy. And then we also have a law school, and this is really cool because as a Drake student, you can actually do a program that we have called 3 plus 3, where you can start in the Drake Law School as a law student during your fourth year at Drake. So that would actually save a student uh, a year of time and tuition money if they know that law school is where they wanna go. Um, so having that law school on campus is a really, really big part uh, for students interested in that kind of pre-law experience. And then outside of the classroom, we have a lot of other stuff to do as well. We do have 140 student organizations and these are, you know, cover a, a wide range of interests and, and passion areas. So some of them might be tied to specific majors or things that you're studying in the classroom, but a lot of them will have no connection to what you're doing in the classroom, and that's totally fine. Because of our medium size, we have a lot of those clubs to offer, but it's also really easy to get involved in whatever you want. So if you're a business student, you can still play in the orchestra or uh, audition for you know, a play with our BFA theater students if you want. Or if you're a neuroscience major, you can still write for the school newspaper, even if you're not a journalism major. So that kind of crossover is, is super easy to do uh, when you're on campus and, and exploring those opportunities. And then at Drake, we do have Division I athletics. Um, most schools our size aren't Division I when it comes to NCAA athletics. So this is a, another cool kind of aspect of Drake is that you still get to see some of the best college athletes in the world competing at Drake. And these athletes are also in your classes, living in the residence halls with you. Like they are part of this small community. Um, I'll be the first to point out that like going to a Drake basketball game is not the same experience as going to like a Mizzou basketball game, right? Like it's definitely still a smaller experience, but it's still at that division one level, which is, which is a really fun experience to have when you're a college student. Also just have to say recently, our women's basketball team has been one of the best in the country, consistently ranked in the top 25. So we also have some amazing, amazing programs that you can go check out when you're a student. And the biggest thing we have on campus that students do outside of the classroom are the Drake Relays. The Drake Relays themselves is a massive track and field meet that we host on campus every year. It brings tens of thousands of people to campus and it brings some of the best athletes in the entire world who have gone to the Olympics and won medals. Like it, it is that tier of competition. It's also been going on for over 100 years. So it has quite a bit of history behind it. And when you're a student, going to the Relays is really fun and you can actually go for free when you're a student, which is a pretty nice deal. But there are also a lot of traditions go with it. We kind of treat it like our homecoming at Drake, where a lot of alumni come back. There are a lot of different, again, like traditions and events to do. The most popular is what you see a picture of here called street painting. Uh, this is a event that we do uh, the week before the relays where we have a street on campus that student organizations get to paint a design into. Um, somewhere along the line, decades ago, the tradition became for it to be mostly a giant paint fight. So the street still gets painted. It still looks really nice when it's done. But mostly, as you can kind of see here, you just show up and throw paint at people. And I don't have a good explanation for why that's what you do, why you do that. That's just what happens. And when I was a student, that was definitely one of my highlights uh, during my time. So something cool to, to definitely uh, look forward to. Then I want to spend just a little bit of more time talking about the application process and, and some scholarship information here at Drake. Uh, applying to Drake is free. We, we, we never charge an application fee. And you can apply on our website, or we do uh, also accept the common application. And so for this year, especially, we are fully test optional. So if you don't have a test score, if you don't like your test score, that's totally fine with us. When you apply to Drake, you'll be able to choose between using a test score, doing an interview with your admission counselor, or submitting an essay. 
So you pick one of those three options to go along with your high school transcript, and that's going to be the, the core of your application and in the material that we're really looking at. And just to be clear, if you apply test optional, that is not going to hurt you or have any negative effects when it comes to admission consideration or scholarship consideration. For this year, at least, none of our scholarships are tied to test scores. So you'll still have that full consideration even if you want to do test optional. And speaking of scholarships, we do offer a lot of aid to help bring that sticker price down because, you know, a school like Drake, that first tuition cost you see can be pretty high. And every student, at least for this year, every student that's admitted to Drake will receive a presidential scholarship. And that ranges from $21,000 to $25,000 per year. So right off the bat, that brings that tuition cost down quite a bit. We do have other scholarships available on top of that that you might qualify for or apply for. And then finally, which I'm guessing most schools will tell you the same thing, we definitely want you to also uh, apply for the FAFSA, you and your family. This is something that you can do to make sure you're getting the best financial aid consideration possible while you're here. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Marissa to talk about University of Iowa. Thanks, Evan. Um, so as I mentioned, we are the University of Iowa. This is another overview of Iowa City, just kind of from the night view. Um, but we'll go ahead and dig into who makes up the University of Iowa on this next slide. Um, so as I mentioned, we are the larger, largest university um, talking to you tonight, but we are not the largest university in the state. We are actually the second largest university in the state. There are three public um, four-year institutions, and we are one of the three. We currently have about 31,000 students altogether and about 22,000 of those students are undergraduate students. So the others are uh, master's level and doctoral level students. Digging a little bit deeper into that 22,000, let's take a look at that first year class. A typical first year class for us ranges from 4,500 to about 5,000 students. Um, so yes, we are a large public institution bringing in about 5,000 students each year. We try to keep it around 50-50, meaning 50% in-state and 50% out of state or international. We believe that having that 50-50 mark really gives you diverse opinions within your classroom experience, and we want that. We want you to have engaging discussions while you are a student at the University of Iowa inside and outside of the classroom. You can see this past year, we were a little bit heavier on in-state, um, but it will sway from that and back and forth um, in-state and out-of-state, one being over the other. Um, if you dig a little bit deeper into our academics, this past year, our average GPA for our incoming students was a 3.76 and the average ACT score was a 25.5. We do accept the ACT or SAT, we just convert all scores to an ACT. Fun fact about the University of Iowa, it's actually where the ACT was developed as a research project, so you have us to thank for that lovely test. Um, as we move on to that next slide, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into the academic side of the University of Iowa. So we are currently ranked number 34 in the nation. These rankings actually just got updated again this week, and again, we are at 34. That's 34th best public institution across the nation. That puts us in the top 5%. So you have a school right across that northern border from you in the top 5%. Uh, if you're looking at the University of Iowa, obviously you're looking at a bigger institution, but we think those personal connections are just as important. Uh, so we do have a lot of faculty on our campus. Our current student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. Now we are a larger institution, so you are gonna have some large classes. Right now, about 4% of our classes are those lecture style classes uh, with over 100 students. A rule at the University of Iowa is if we have you in a class that has over 75 students enrolled, you will have a small breakout discussion once a week. That'll be led by either a teaching assistant or a professor to go over the main concepts that you discuss during lecture, go over any homework, papers, uh, and upcoming exams. So you have that large class, but also that smaller class attached to it. Another big thing about the University of Iowa is right now 80% of our classes have 30 or less. So yes, big school, but we do have some small school uh, feel to it as well. With that big school also comes big opportunities inside the classroom. Um, so at the University of Iowa right now, we offer over 200 areas of study. This includes our majors, minors, and certificates. You just need one major to graduate from the University of Iowa, but if you really wanna personalize your education, you can add a second major, you can add a minor, a certificate, or some sort of combination. Uh, with that initial major. I personally am a graduate of the University of Iowa and graduated with a major and two minors and still graduated on time. So it's definitely something you can do. Some of our more popular majors at the University of Iowa include business, engineering, biology, psychology, English and creative writing, and open. Open is our really nice way of saying, I'm not sure yet, I haven't decided. And that's okay, because we have 200 areas of study we know you might not know right away. We'll help you figure that out 
in that first year, year and a half that you're at the University of Iowa. We're really well known for our health science programs because we are home to one of the largest teaching and research hospitals on a college campus anywhere in America. We also have a medical school, a dental school, a college of pharmacy, a physical therapy program, speech and hearing science, and we're currently home to the nation's top physician's assistant program. But we're also home to the nation's top creative writing program. So definitely a span of different majors and things that you can study at the university. So even though we think it's very important that you go to classes, we also think it's just as important that you get involved outside of the classroom. So we challenge all of our students to choose at least one student organization to get involved in while they're at the University of Iowa. I personally would challenge you to get involved in a few more, um, but don't overload your organizations either. Don't feel like you have to be in every single club and organization, but take this time to try something new. We have over 500 different clubs and organizations at Iowa. Some of these are academic, uh, interests. Some of these are cultural. Some of these are just new skills or hobbies to pick up along the way. Um, I just got an email the other day about the sailboat club. They'll teach you how to sail a boat, which I think sounds so cool. Um, something I wish I would have learned while I was at the University of Iowa. But if that's not for you, that's okay too. Um, maybe you're interested in staying competitive. We have intramurals, anything from flag football, dodgeball, kickball, volleyball, three-on-three -three basketball, five-on-five -five basketball, mini golf. We also have club sports. So if you want to stay competitive, kind of above that intramural level, uh, club sports have tryouts and then they actually travel across the country competing against other colleges club teams. And then of course, we are part of the Division I athletics. We are part of the Big Ten. Um, so we take this very seriously at the University of Iowa. Hawk Nation is definitely something uh, that most students want to become a part of. So we have 24 sports teams that are part of the Big Ten. 22 of those are free for you to see as a student. The two that do cost you money are gonna be football and men's basketball, but we do try and make those as discounted as possible so that we're not breaking the bank for you. We want you to be able um, to be a part of that Hawkeye Nation and get to cheer on your classmates. Um, another thing at the University of Iowa, if you are not looking at the athletic side, or maybe you are looking at the athletic side, but you're also a performer, there's tons of ways to perform at the University of Iowa, and you don't have to be a major or minor to audition. So auditions are open to any student on our campus. Our fine arts department is made up of theater, dance, vocal, and instrumental performance, and there are plenty of different groups within each of the sides of the fine arts department. Last year, they put on over 400 performances. So if this is something you are interested in doing, um, you can absolutely do that at the university. Now, if all of this sounds great to you, uh, we would love to see your application. And so on this next slide, we'll talk a little bit about the application process. So at the University of Iowa, we have a traditional way of admitting students, and this is gonna look a little bit different. So if you are a senior, there's two different uh, standards for admission this year. If you are not a senior and you are a junior, sophomore, or even younger, um, you're gonna be looking at our standard way of admission as of right now. Um, so for my seniors with test scores and juniors, sophomores, and below, we'll be looking at what this slide says right here. So the REI formula, you don't need to know what it stands for, but it's the Region Admission Index, in case anyone does ask you. Um, it looks at three main components. It looks at your ACT or SAT score, your cumulative GPA from your freshman year through the time you apply, and your core classes. Core classes are classes in English, math, science, social studies, and foreign language. We weight each of those components a little bit differently, then we add that score up. And if it comes out to a 255 or higher, you are automatically admissible to the University of Iowa. Now, there are some programs that require additional application for direct admission. So our business, um, our Tiffy College of Business, as well as our College of Engineering, College of Education, and College of Pharmacy may ask you for additional information to apply directly to their programs, along with our nursing program. Now, this is our traditional way of admitting students. If you are a senior right now, um, you can apply this way if you have a test score and you want us to see your test score. But if you are a senior who hasn't taken the ACT or SAT or doesn't like your score because you haven't had a chance to retake it, we are test flexible this year, meaning you do not have to apply with a test score for this year. If you do not apply with a test score, we do ask that you send your transcript as well as a personal statement to the University of Iowa for our admissions committee to review. That personal statement should include things along the lines of why you think you'd be successful at the University of Iowa or why you're choosing the University of Iowa and how it's gonna help you with your personal and academic goals. So just keep that in mind, two different ways that we look at students this year, but I believe we'll be going back to the traditional RAI formula in the future. To apply to the University of Iowa, you can use our application, the common application, or the coalition application. We look at all of those applications the exact same way. We just ask that you only fill out one application when you apply to the university. 
Um, something that's important to keep in mind is we want you to apply by March 1st of your senior year to be eligible for scholarships. And that next slide does talk a little bit more about scholarships. So at the University of Iowa, there's three main pools of financial assistance. One is gonna be merit-based aid. Typically, we would base that on your ACT, SAT, and GPA. This year, we are gonna be looking at you holistically. In the past, those merit-based aid uh, awards for our out-of-state students range from two to $12,000. Then our second pool of um, financial assistance is coming from our departments and our donors. If you are admitted to the University of Iowa, you will have access to our donors and our department scholarship application through the scholarship portal. You'll fill out one application and it'll go through and it'll search over 600 different scholarships to see if there's something that you might be eligible for through that. It may ask you for additional information at that time. And the third pool of money is gonna be that financial need-based aid. As Evan said, every school wants to see you fill out that FAFSA. So we use that FAFSA to determine if you're gonna qualify for any need-based aid. We recommend that you fill it out sometime between October 1st and our priority deadline of December 1st. December 1st each year that you are a student at the University of Iowa. That was a quick run, run through the University of Iowa. Uh, if you do have more questions or you want more in-depth um, information, we do have another information session just with the University of Iowa on Wednesday, Mar or sorry, March, Wednesday, September 23rd at 7 p.m. And I'll hand it over to Sam. Great. Thanks, Marissa. I know it kind of feels like it still is March, even though I know that was a long time ago. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, my name is Sarah Fisher, and I represent Grinnell College. Uh, and I'm pleased to be talking you, to you more about um, our academic curriculum, the makeup of the student body, and really what I think is unique about the Grinnell experience. The Grinnell student body, um, we have about 1,700 students on campus. And as I mentioned earlier, we are in a town of about 10,000 people. So you really get that close connectedness across both the student body, with faculty members, with staff members, as well as within the larger community. The vast majority of faculty and staff do live in the town of Grinnell. So if you are looking for that sense of connection across the entire town and across the entire student body, you'll definitely get that through um, Grinnell College. Unlike a lot of other uh, of our peer institutions, Grinnell is really lucky to have uh, a large amount of resources to help fund uh, the student body experience. So we have an endowment of about $2 billion and that helps fund a wide range of different academic experiences for students, also helps to provide funding for things like study abroad, internships. We're really dedicated to the idea at Grinnell that no matter what your background is and where you're coming from, your financial circumstances or the educational environment from which you came from should not inhibit you from participating in the wide range of different opportunities that we provide for students. So we, we call that the idea of experiential equity. And we are, uh, like I said, lucky, grateful that our endowment funds help us to support that for all students. This is a slide here of uh, Mac Field, which is kind of this big grassy area in the middle of campus. It depicts students playing, I don't know, football or something, but it's a common place for students to hang out, play ultimate frisbee. Um, a lot of times people will ask about the culture of Grinnell and, you know, what are Grinnell students like? Um, we always like to say if you met a Grinnell student at a party, some of the descriptors that might be used are students who are purposeful, inquisitive, genuine, creative, accepting, and influential. And I know those are kind of broad terms, but I think they really do a nice job of encapsulating who those 1,700 students are on campus. More specifically though, we really pride ourselves on the fact that we bring students from all over the world to the campus community. So I think, you know, sometimes students think, oh, small town Iowa, small school, oh my gosh, I'm not going to meet a lot of different types of students, I might be bored, and truly the opposite is true at Grinnell. We have about 25% of our students who identify as domestic students of color, about 15% are first generation college students. We also really pride ourselves on the fact that we have a socioeconomically diverse campus. So it's not a school where everyone comes from the same income bracket. 
we really have a wide range of different financial backgrounds that are represented. We also have students from all over the world. So about 19% of our student body are international and they represent over 50 different countries. This is a picture of our campus center, for lack of a better term. It's called the Joe Rosenfeld Center. And it's a great space where students eat, study, just hang out with one another. And you can see at the very top, and this picture just only shows a portion of it, but these are flags that represent all the different citizenships within the student body. And there's a whole other side to this that's not depicted in this photograph that again, I think really just reinforces the amount of diversity and the global feel that you'll get on the Grinnell campus. So Grinnell, the town, we are located about five, five and a half, five and a half hours from the St. Louis area. We do have a lot of students on campus from Missouri. I mentioned the geographic diversity of the campus and that certainly extends to the United States. And, um, and Missouri in particular is an area where we tend to get a lot of students from. So if it's important to you that there are students who, you know, have a somewhat similar geographic background to you, I think that you will definitely find that on the Grinnell campus. And as I mentioned earlier, we are about an hour from Des Moines, an hour from Iowa City. So if you do feel the need to get into a larger sort of city feel, you can do that. Although I will say most of our students do stay on campus over the weekends. It's very much a residential community. And I think students who go to Grinnell, they're seeking that and they find a lot of value in that experience. The Grinnell academic experience is different than I think some other institutions that are out there. So at our core, we are a liberal arts institution. And what that means is that we really want to educate students broadly across, across a wide variety of fields. So I know sometimes people hear liberal arts and they think, oh, that must be a focus on the arts, but I want to be a science major. So I shouldn't go to a liberal arts institution because I won't get a good science education. That is not true. What we mean by liberal arts is that you're liberally educated or broadly educated across a wide range of areas. Because of our size, your guaranteed small class sizes, the average class size is 17. You can see the student faculty ratio here of nine to one. All of our classes are taught by faculty members. And this picture here is a pretty typical class at Grinnell. The faculty members, you can see he's in the corner there and students are usually in a seminar style type of setup where there's a heavy emphasis placed on discussion, exchanging ideas, and really bringing to the table your thoughts, criticisms, feedback on whatever it is that you're learning. So you're really meant to hone those writing skills, communication skills, critical thinking skills, no matter what you're majoring in, and that all is facilitated by this smaller classroom setting. The Grinnell curriculum is called the Individually Advised Curriculum. And what that means is that you only have one required class outside of your major. So beyond that, you can choose whatever class you want to take. So students certainly have requirements for their major or many of our students double major. So for multiple majors, you have requirements for both, both of those areas. But like I said, beyond that, you get to choose. There's no general education requirements. There's no core requirements. So you really get the maximum amount of flexibility in the structure of your curriculum and what it is that you wanna learn. You can see here that our top five majors are economics, computer science, political science, psychology, and biological chemistry. But then not far beyond that are things like history, English. So I'd say probably regardless of what it is that you wanna study, as long as it's a major we offer, it's a strong area and you will find like-minded students who are interested in that. Grinnell uniquely provides every student with three advisors. So you might have heard, you hear about this individually advised curriculum and you think, okay, that sounds great, but also a little intimidating. How am I gonna know which classes to take? I wanna make sure, of course, that I graduate on time and the vast majority of our students do graduate within four years, that is a goal of ours. Um, and so we provide every student with both a academic faculty advisor who will mentor you starting from day one to help you navigate the curriculum, think about your academic passions, 
and determine, you know, what is it that you want educationally to get out of this Grinnell experience. You'll also be paired with a career advisor and you'll be paired with a resident advisor, community advisor, and that's a student who lives in the residence hall and will help with that social transition. So I always like to say, if you think about the three kind of main components of your college experience, the academics, finding a job and having fun, the social piece, Grinnell provides advisors, provides mentorship across all three of those areas. We also provide ample opportunity for students to do research. And again, I think sometimes students think small school, I'm not gonna be able to do research because it's not a research university. That's not true. Actually, 100% of students at Grinnell conduct research. And that also is not just in the sciences, it's also in the humanities, the social studies. We have a program called the MAP program, Mentored Advanced Project, which is a specialized research project that allows students to do research with a faculty mentor, that's what's featured here, and students get a stipend over the summer to complete that research. They actually get academic credit to do it as well. Students do this on the Grinnell campus. They do it all over the world, depending on the nature of the project. And again, this is you know, what this smaller institution with faculty teaching the classes and the resources for endowment, these are the opportunities that we're able to facilitate for students. These small class sizes, having access to research, being challenged by your peers, all of these things are going to set you up for success outside of the classroom. And I think some of these rankings really bear witness to, um, to what our students are able to accomplish when they graduate. So just a couple of examples. We are seventh in the US for PhD production. So if you are thinking about going to graduate school, well, wonderful preparation for that. We also have a very high medical school acceptance rate, law school acceptance rate. Um, featured in this picture here is Grinnell alum uh, Kumail Nanjiani. You may have seen him in the movie The Big Sick. He gave the, the uh, graduation speech, commencement speech, a couple of years ago. And he was a philosophy and computer science major at Grinnell and then became an actor. So there, your, your degree can take you in lots of different, perhaps unexpected places. What students do for fun, you know, again, I think that that's a, students think small school, rural location, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be so bored, what am I gonna do? And Grinnell students find so many ways to be engaged. We have over uh, 100 different student organizations. We have a really robust student activities budget, so almost half a million dollars is spent towards student activities, and the students have a huge say in how that money is spent. This photograph here is of our International Student Festival that happens every year. It's such a wonderful event uh, and is very widely attended. When you talk about traditions on campus, I think this is actually one of the traditions that is probably um, the most looked forward to throughout the year. But again, there's, there's just so much that we bring to campus. We're aware of the fact that we're in a small town. You can't necessarily go off campus and find a bunch of different concerts or you know, a film festival. So we bring that to campus for our students. In addition to the clubs and organizations, we also have a robust athletic program. We are division three, which means that you, we do not offer athletic scholarships, but we do have competitive varsity sports with 20 NCAA division three varsity sports. We also have outstanding athletic facilities. This is a photograph, obviously, of our swimming pool, um, which I, I think arguably is probably the best in our conference, if not of, uh, amongst the variety of liberal arts colleges across the country. And these facilities are open to everyone. So even if you're not a varsity athlete, you have access to all of the same facilities as our varsity athletes do. I just want to, um, quickly wrap up by talking a little bit about career opportunities for students. So I mentioned that all students are assigned a career advisor, and that advisor is going to help connect you with internships, connecting with alumni, and really just thinking through what that next step after graduation might be. This is a group of students who went on a, what's called an industry tech trek to explore Intel. Uh, we've also had students who have gone to other parts of Silicon Valley, they've gone to human rights organizations in New York, Whatever your interest might be, 
we're really intentional about helping you connect with other individuals who um, can help educate you about that profession and then set you up for applying for a job in it once you graduate. We also pride ourselves on having a tradition of social responsibility, thinking about how your Grinnell degree can be used towards the common good. I will also say that, and I know that my colleagues can say this about their institutions as well, being in Iowa in a presidential year, election year, is like no other experience. Uh, we have students who get highly involved in the presidential campaigns, and it's just such an exciting place to be if you are interested in politics. And then lastly, um, Grinnell is a need blind institution, which means that we don't look at your finances when we review your application for admission. We're also committed to meeting 100% of your demonstrated needs. If you do qualify for financial aid, we will meet that full need. And we do give merit scholarships that range from $10,000 to $25,000 per year. You're automatically reviewed for one of those with your application for admission. We do practice holistic admission. So unlike what Marissa was sharing with the University of Iowa, when we look at you for admission, we're looking at all the different pieces of your application. There's not an assigned weight or formula to our process. We're looking to see what kind of student you are and what type of community member you would be. Because as you learn, this is a special community and we really wanna make sure that we have students who will contribute not only in the classroom, but also outside of the classroom. And Evan, I'm gonna skip that last slide, I think, on my presentation so that we can move on to questions. And this is an overview of our uh, contact information for Missouri. You can see that all of our institutions split up Missouri amongst a couple of different people. So depending on your location, uh, please feel free to reach out to these individuals. Reaching out to admission officers is a great way to learn more about the school. Um, so if we're not able to get to your question tonight or if you're watching this recorded, please reach out to us at another time if you do have questions for us. And I will stop there. And Marissa, I don't know if we have received any questions yet, but we're happy to spend the last few minutes here answering any questions that you guys have. If you do have any questions, make sure you go ahead and type those in and we'll try and answer them in the last couple of minutes. Otherwise, again, as Sarah mentioned, we do have all of our contact information up there. It does take a team of us to cover the nation. So you'll see that there are a few other admission counselors that help us out uh, covering the other side of Missouri. Um, but please feel free to reach out to any of us. It looks like, I think we have one question. Marissa, I don't know if you see that one coming in. I do. Uh, looks like the question is, what are the acceptance rates, rates for each school? And since I already have my mic on, I'll go ahead and say ours is 85% of our students are accepted at the University of Iowa. And, and at Drake, you know, it depends year to year, but usually we're around 70% in terms of an acceptance rate. In this past year at Grinnell, um, it was 19% of students were admitted. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take over and just do a couple of last minute housekeeping items. Of course, we have a couple of minutes left. If you do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. If there's a second at the end where the presenters can answer your questions, I'm sure that they will. But thank you so much for joining us. And when you close the window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. And we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this was, as I mentioned at the beginning, just one of many sessions hosted over the next few weeks through Missouri ACAC. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at moacac.org. I'm going to share my screen. I just realized I forgot to do that, so sorry. Um, that has the, um, the website, moacac.org. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings over the next three weeks, this weekend plus three more weeks at moacac.org. So thank you very much for joining us. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye guys.